I'm Philip Stoughton. We are here at Scoop Talk at SMTAI in Chicago. Robert, thanks for joining me, Thank stopping by the chat. Um, let's talk a little bit about failure analysis. What's going on in the industry? What are the, what are the problems people are having and, and how are you solving them? Everybody wants to know why stuff's gone wrong so they can stop it happening. Everybody wants to know why stuff's gone wrong and they want to know instantaneously. Mm. And because of that need, we have built a business out of that. Our clientele is looking for non-destructive failure analysis of boards, mainly at the BGA and QFN level, the high density interconnect level. And our ideal client is somebody who is lying down with a stoppage, needs an answer, has to affect change or alter a process in hours, oftentimes in minutes. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. We have clients who will call us up at 10 o'clock in the morning wanting to make an appointment for 3D imaging of a suspect printed circuit right. board at one o'clock in the afternoon so that they can make a process change at three o'clock in the afternoon so okay. that they can make a quarter inch shipment. Okay, and the people that are coming to you, do they tend to be the EMS companies, the brands themselves? You know, when something goes wrong and it's an outsourced solution, who comes, who comes to you then? Often it's an OEM, a process engineer, who is the technical liaison with a large contract manufacturer. What's continually amazing to me is that even the Tier 1s and the Tier 2s lack this capability, mm. or for reasons best known to themselves, choose not to have this capability, which creates an opportunity for us. Yeah. They'll come to us kind of as a neutral third party, to provide them with an objective yeah. overview of the problem. And, or maybe they have data from that contract manufacturer and they're skeptical about that data and they want a third party evaluation. So often the, the engineer, the OEM engineer, will ask us to do a blind test on a board. He'll, yeah. He or she will tell us, look here. They won't describe the issue. Yeah. They'll simply say, look in this location, ignore the rest of the board yeah. and tell us what you see. Yeah. And so we'll say, oh, fine. We see a head and pillow characteristic in this location. We say imperfect soldering, reflow issues here, voiding there, misalignment here. Yeah. Here's what you can do about it. Okay, to me the answer there is that key word of independence. That's why they're coming to you and maybe they don't have that process themselves because they feel that independence is important. When you look at the failures we're seeing and it's probably not a decreasing number, is that driven by the packing density demands of the OEMs, or is it more driven by the component industry and, and the way the components are developing with, with joints that we can't see in conven through conventional methods? It's all of the above, but it's primarily lack, uh, inability of the contract manufacturers to adapt processes quickly enough mm -hmm. to increasing packing density. Right. And so there's a trial and error process going on there and unfortunately for them, but very beneficial for people like us, the newer technologies, the newer process equipment generates these errors at a yeah. faster defect rate, yeah. which creates a business opportunity. Yeah. The good news is we can provide sufficient feedback to those new processes that they can adjust them, but there's still a fairly large element of trial and error involved, yeah. which is why we do what we do. And how creative do you have to be in terms of bringing in the right capital equipment, mixing the right kind of measurement and test processes to get the data you need out. Very creative. In fact, some of the x-ray technology that we are using that is board specific is not always adequate for the tasks. Mm. We're having to look farther afield to other industries, to the x-ray technology that get, they use to adapt to our industry. Just one example, the automotive industry. Some of the applications that CT scan is being used for there in mechanical engineering applications is easily transferable over to what we do mm. at the board level. Yeah. And so our next generation equipment may be something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you're actually almost designing and developing the equipment yourself and working with the different vendors to come up with that, exactly with right. that hybrid solution. Exactly Fantastic. right. Well, fascinating stuff, Robert. Thanks for stopping by to chat and I uh, hope we can talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.